Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay, coming to you from Washington. Now joining us from London is Mohammed Janaid. He's a PhD student and researcher. He comes from Peshawar in Pakistan, which is the city near the Pakistan-Afghan border. Thanks for joining us, Mohammed. Thank you. So tell us what you hear from your own research and people you've been talking to in Pakistan, Afghanistan. What's going on at the, the uh, American NATO offensive in Marja? Um, well, um, it, it has been a week that, you know, something has started in Marja, uh, in Helmand, uh, which is very close to Kandahar. The NATO forces are going there in number and they are drumming it up as uh, a big battle of this war. Some points are, um, are encouraging, there are good things happening because they are, they are seeing that they will build it positively. Uh, some of the points look like a lot of media hype. Which is, which is being created to drum up support in the Western countries, surely. So, as for example, uh, uh, th there is not supposed to be any battle there because it is a guerrilla war. This is mountainous area, and there will be a guerrilla war. And in guerrilla war, uh, it has to be um, hand to hand combat thing. Uh, so, so expecting a big um, battle in this place is 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 a bit of is a bit of a media thing. It seemed like the Americans not only knew that, but perhaps wanted it. They made it clear, they announced weeks ahead of time that they were going to do this. So it sounds like they actually were hoping a lot of Taliban would leave the town. Uh, the, the, the question, I guess, comes down to this. I, I think everyone's assuming that sooner or later uh, they will control the town, and, and then, then what? So two, the two parts to the then what. How many civilians got killed in the course of that? And then number two, what is holding really mean? So start with the first part. Apparently five more civilians were killed today. Uh, Twelve were killed, I believe, yesterday. Uh, to what extent do you think the people of Marja will accept any civilian deaths? And, 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 what, and what do you think the people of the town actually want? Well, you know, go back to the Pashtun customs, you know, which is the real guideline for us and how do they take the deaths there. Uh, if a death is an offensive uh, one and you know there is no backup of that, there is no apology tendered and there is no reconciliation through the Jirga system, then it is surely taken as a very a very negative thing and it can bite back really, really badly for the NATO forces. Um, however, they will be expecting some civilian deaths and which is natural. Um, I think it all comes down to how do they build this area, what do they do with the civilians. It is very clear that the Karzai government and the, the, the mainly Tajik and Uzbek Afghan National Army is not really welcomed in these areas. Uh, I'm sure that the American and British forces will be welcomed, at least partially, there is no doubt in that. The people of this area, poor people, uh, suffering for, for, for the last four decades, um, they don't wish to fight each and every person coming there. And if they have good things to give to this place, uh, they will surely welcome it. But as soon as these forces leave, and you know it comes down to of our national army, of our police, um, then you know the troubles will start. So the last part, holding, is you know something. Well, but before we get there, the, the way the media is playing this in the West is that the population of Marja are more or less I mean, it's practically like as if they're neutral in this. Uh, to what extent is there popular support for the Taliban? Is there a popular support for anti-foreign occupation? Uh, what, what, do you, what do you make of that? You see, um, uh, I think you know, we have to look at you know, uh, two parts of this. The first uh, part you know, comes from um, the, the adherence to you know, cultural values and you know, the hatred of, from the foreign invasion. However, you know, the, this is, you know, complicated by extreme poverty and four decades of continuous war. Um, so not, you know, all the 100,000 people, you know, will be, you know, fighting the NATO forces and trying to, you know, get rid of them at any cost. That's not, you know, how it is going to work. Uh, it, the, the main thing is, these people are coming in, they are taking uh, the, the posts, but what do they bring with them? Do they bring post prosperity, food, bread? good things you know to this town and not you know meddling in the culture of these people which is the very which is a very sensitive area if they let them you know live the way they want to live um and bring them prosperity i see no reason you know for these people to accept the nato forces being there to accept or not to accept 
to accept. They will accept it. But uh, I mean, you know, there are two things. One is, you know, they are poor people, so they will, you know, want their development. Hold on, hold on. Let, let, let me just back up because I, I just want to be really clear on this. You're saying if they do develop some level of prosperity there, people yes. can accept the NATO yes. or American forces and, and what the plan is for this area. <clears throat> well, let me ask. Well, let me ask a question in regards to that. Then, if I understand it correctly, this is one of the main areas of poppy growing, and and yes. heroin and other types of production of narcotics. Um, if there's going to be reconstruction there and prosperity, they have what should be the attitude towards the question of poppy? Because right now it's all about the poppy. Look, uh, the the poppy cultivation again is you know uh, it's it's a, it's an on-off story in the last five six decades. If you look at the history of this place, uh, whenever there was good support from the government, there was once support from American government in 1960s when it was even called Small America. You can find this on internet even. Uh, when that started happening, people you know left cultivating poppy. If you come to the poppy question, remember one simple thing. Uh, the poppy is controlled by the warriors and the strong people there. The poor people, the 90 to 95 percent poor people, do not have all the riches coming from the poppy. And just to, just to be clear, many of these warlords are all around the Karzai government. It's not just the Taliban. Exactly, exactly. They are around the Ta Karzai government. They are from among Tajiks, Uzbeks, and Pashtuns as well. The, it, it is the area of warlords. So what do you do with, with these 90 to 95 percent people? Do, if you leave them, you know, with their own culture, the way you know they want to live, don't go into their home and, you know, tell them to take their women out of their homes. Don't de-weaponize them. Do, don't do these kind of things. And give them, you know, their bread, give them hospitals and, you know, give them good facilities. Now, 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 one of the issues is that the Americans are saying sooner than later they're going to turn this over to an Afghan government to the Afghan armed forces. But most of these armed forces are Uzbeks and Tajiks. They're not Pashtuns. Uh, are they going to accept an Afghan army that's mostly northerners? And that is going to be, you know, problematic. There is, you know, the ethnic divide, which is, the ethnic divide is huge. It is, you know, 2,000 years old. So even if the Uzbeks and Tajiks are very good to these people, even then it is very hard. But it is very, you know, hard to imagine that Uzbeks and Tajiks will, you know, treat these people very well. It is almost impossible to imagine that. They, they are corrupt. The, I mean, it's a poor country. You know, you, you look at any African country. This happens there as well. So it is hard to imagine what will happen then. So what, 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 what do you think is going to, in the next few days, what should, be, should we be looking for to see whether this campaign seems to be successful from an American point of view? From the American point of view, I think, you know, they, they need to, they, they, I think, you know, they need not to chase Taliban too much. They need to, you know, concentrate more and more on, you know, developing the area and making, you know, people feel that what America was, you know, it is coming here. It is going to be small America again. And if they give that feeling to the people, you would see very positive results. And what, what, are, what are two or three concrete things they should be doing there in terms of development? Well, you know, as I said, you know, the, the foremost thing, you know, do not, you know, try to indulge in their, in, in their cultures and their lived, uh, you know, the, in, the, in, the, in the way they live. That, that is, you know, the very sensitive area. But then, you know, there are essential living, uh, you know, amenities, life amenities. There is, you know, clean water, there, is, there are hospitals, there are roads, there are jobs, you know, there is irrigation system. There are hundreds of things, you know, which are, which, which are not there in that area for the last four decades. So if you develop them, uh, there is no reason, you know, these people will not be happy. I guess we'll see. I mean, that's been the same story right from the beginning in 2001, that if there had been reconstruction, none of this would have been happening. So I guess we'll see if the, any lessons have been learned. Thanks very much for joining us, Mohammed. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.